find yourself crashing shortly after breakfast. By the time you get to work, you're hitting the coffee machine, you're craving sugar, you're craving sweets. Um, all day long, you're either between caffeine and sugar, just trying to get your energy up. Well, it could be what you're eating for breakfast. Today, I'm gonna to count down the six worst things you can eat for breakfast and give you some good alternatives too. The first thing on my list is pastries. So that's danishes, cinnamon rolls, uh, any kind of sweet pastry item. Um, the reason that these are on my list is because most pastries are made with just kind of your standard white flour. So it's a processed flour um, and I've talked about this in previous videos, um, but when you're eating a processed white flour, um, that's empty calories. And so basically what that means is you're getting calories, but they don't really contain any nutrition. They don't really contain any fiber. They don't contain much in terms of nutrients. Uh, so I know we hear that term empty calories a lot, and sometimes we may think in our heads, oh, it's an empty calorie, they don't turn into fat. Well, wrong. Um, empty calories do turn into fat, and they turn into fat more so than your more nutritious calories that you get from a nutrient-dense food. Um, another thing about pastries is that they're also going to have a lot of sugar in them. So whether it's sugar or high fructose corn syrup or whatever that is, um, that is going to um, spike your blood sugar, of course. Um, so the worst thing you want to do in the morning is spike your blood sugar. It's gonna not only make you hungry uh, hungry again sooner, but it also is gonna really deplete the amount of energy that you're getting. So you may get that initial burst of energy, but as we know uh, by the word sugar crash, uh, pretty soon your energy is gonna crash back down. So pastries, you're rarely getting any sustainable energy from them. It's a lot of empty calories, and it's gonna spike your blood sugar and give you a sugar crash. So some good alternatives to pastries. Um, if it's the carbs that you're looking for, um, then I would encourage you to look for 100% whole wheat flour uh, pastry items. Um, sprouted grains are really good as well. Um, you wanna make sure that it doesn't just say wheat or it doesn't just look like wheat, but you actually wanna read the label and make sure it says 100% whole wheat. Um, and that's gonna be a lot better carbohydrate that's gonna give you some energy, give you some nutrition. If it's the sugar that you're craving in the morning, which is why you're reaching for pastries, then I would recommend fruits. Um, a lot of times people roll their eyes when you talk about fruits, but fruits really are a lot of wonderful flavor, will definitely satisfy your sugar craving, and the more that you pull away from the high fructose corn syrup and the refined sugar, the more the sweetness of natural fruits will come out and be even stronger and more enjoyable. The next item on my list is cereal and skim milk. Um, cereals are actually the number two most uh, purchased item in grocery stores in America, falling short behind sodas. Um, so cereals, something that almost all of us will reach for in a hurry. Uh, for a lot of people, it's something that they're eating maybe once or even twice a day. Uh, the problem with cereals is similar to the problem with pastries, and that's that you've got a very highly, reform, uh, highly refined wheat or corn going into the cereal. Um, empty calories that are coming from something that doesn't have very much nutrition and isn't going to really give you any energy, give you any energy that your body can use. And so you've got a blood sugar spike that happens as a result of eating those highly refined flours and the sugar that that cereal is also going to contain. So some good alternatives to cereal would be oats or oatmeal. Um, if you read the back of the label, you can look for 100% whole wheat cereals. Um, they've even got you know rice flakes and other things like that that um, generally are going to be more healthy than most of the name brand cereals that we see out there on the markets. The second part of this item is the skim milk. 
Uh, skim milk is not only shortchanging you on the flavor, but it's also shortchanging you on the nutrition that you would gain from milk. So the fat content in milk is necessary, not only because it's good healthy fats for our body, but also because the fat in the milk is really crucial um, for digesting the rest of the milk, digesting the, the proteins and the lactose and the other components of the milk. So you really wanna opt for at least 2%, um, if not whole milk. Um, of course, you wanna, you know, organic milk is gonna be better. Grass-fed cows um, is always gonna provide you healthier dairy than um, what you would find if you go for the skim milk or if you go for the other conventional brands of milk. The third item is egg whites or egg beaters, egg white omelets. Um, a lot of people have been avoiding the egg yolk because of the fat content or the cholesterol, uh, but ultimately this is not doing your body a service and it's not doing anything for the flavor of your food either. So you want to be eating the whole egg. The yolk is actually where most of the nutrients, the good omega-3 fats, um, are. So when you're just eating the egg white, not only are you less able to digest that egg, but you're really missing out on a lot of the nutrition. Eggs have a whole lot of protein in them. They are very, very healthful and a great option for breakfast. Um, you can hard boil them so that you just kind of cook them once and then you have them in your refrigerator uh, for the rest of the week. Then they kind of can be a quick on the go kind of snack. So eggs are really healthy, but you want to make sure that you're eating the yolk as well. The next food that I want to address is the fake butter spreads and margarines. A lot of folks have been getting rid of the butter in favor of these spreads, thinking that they're more healthy, but really and truly those spreads are taking an oil, um, a vegetable oil like canola oil or sunflower oil or something like that, and then hydrogenating them and whipping them at really high speeds so that they will take on the consistency and the firmness of butter. But that process of hydrogenation or partial hydrogenation actually creates trans fats and some other chemicals that we really don't want in our systems. So the alternative is to eat real butter. Butter is not only delicious, but it has a lot of good fats, a lot of good oils that our bodies do need and that our bodies can use. Uh, coconut oil is also another really good spread. Um, some people don't like the flavor. I happen to love the flavor of coconut oil. Um, so it's great. You can use it as a spread on toast, but you can also cook with it. So butter, coconut oil are always going to be better than a fake butter spread or margarine. The next breakfast item on my list is soy protein smoothies. Um, now there's a lot of different information out there right now about soy and I don't want to get too heavily into it, um, but it's becoming more accepted now that soy is actually very hard for the body to digest. Um, it's used a lot in Asian cultures, but they really only use the fermented forms of soy. So that's tempeh, natto, um, miso, and they don't consume a whole lot of tofu. But here in the States, we find out something is good for us and we kind of, you know, go crazy with it. And so we're consuming a whole lot more soy than is probably healthy for us. Um, soy also can cause dysfunctions of the thyroid, which is responsible for your hormone control, so it can cause mood disorders and things like that. Um, a good alternative to soy protein is whey protein or hemp protein powders. Um, so, uh, smoothies in themselves are a really great breakfast item because they're quick and they're easy uh, and you can virtually throw anything into a smoothie. Um, almond butter and peanut butter is a great way to kind of thicken up your smoothie and add in some uh, some nuts that are going to help fill you up and add to that, you know, satisfying fullness that we really need in the mornings. Um, hemp protein has a lot of other nutrients as well, a lot of good fatty acids and things like that, and a lot of fiber. So if you are somebody who relies on that protein shake in the morning, I'd encourage you to look at some of the alternatives to soy and try to eliminate soy from your breakfast smoothies as much as possible. The last item that I want to address is coffee. Um, coffee has a lot of different health effects and you can check those out either on our channel or online. 
but basically what I want to get across in this video is that coffee alone is a really bad breakfast. <laughs> uh, coffee is not only taxing to your adrenal glands, and as I mentioned, having a lot of other negative health benefits, but it's definitely not a good substitute for breakfast. Um, it's really important that we're eating some good nutrients in the morning. Uh, when we wake up, uh, a good thing to start with is a glass of water, but then from there, you really want to aim to get some nutrients, to get some good fats, to get some good proteins, so that you're really helping your body create energy and make you less likely to have to go back to the coffee machine over and over, trying to get out of that like lethargic morning slump that it's so hard to get out of. Um, it's really important, so if you're eating um, meats, even meats in the morning can make a great breakfast. Some lean meats would be really good. Um, eggs, things like that. Uh, fruits with almond butter or peanut butter also makes a great snack in the morning. Uh, but you definitely don't want to skip breakfast and just have coffee. Uh, if giving up coffee is something you can do, try alternatives like tea. There's even some coffee flavored drinks out there as well. So if you can give up coffee or drink less coffee, that would be good. But at the very least, just make sure that you're eating something in conjunction with your coffee. In a future video, I'm going to give you some more good examples of whole food snacks that you should be incorporating into your diet. And in another video, I'm going to give you five tips on how you can make your healthy foods taste better. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that some of this information was useful to you and interesting to you. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Go ahead and leave me some comments down below. Let me know if there's other foods you're interested in learning about or if there's questions that I may have raised for you in this video. And please go ahead and subscribe to Psyche Truth.